Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to be covering vector scoring versus vector cutting. Let's get into it. Today I'm going to be doing a project that I've done in the past which is an art mirror design for Adam over at Pretty Done. Uh, if I can find his links I will put them in the description below. Uh, so he actually has these commissioned uh, to go to a client. In the process of making those, I use vector scoring as part of how I create my backer in order to place my pieces for signage. I've gotten a lot of questions in the past about what vector scoring is and if it's different in the processes or how you set it up than vector cutting. And this video is intended to address all of that. So first up, just a little bit of background. Vector cutting is going to be cutting all the way through a piece of material. This is just referred to as vector cut. Uh, or vector processing depending on your laser software. Vector scoring is when you just make a mark on the actual material that uses the same paths as your vector cut would, but your settings are going to be different in order to achieve just a mark instead of a cut all the way through. Vector scoring can be a great way to highlight elements in an engraving, or placing items for signage and a ton of other things. So let's go over to the software and I will show you how to set up a vector scoring operation and then I'll show you what it looks like in real life on the actual piece that I'm making. Here's the design that I'm going to be making which is a turntable design that I've made in videos past. Uh, so what I'm going to do is cut the backer out of white acrylic. The black line here is going to be the border of that cutout the red is what is going to be vector scored. In order to get this to work, what I need to do is send this over to my laser software, which is going to be my epilogue engraver. Automatically, it splits into two processes for me, the black and the red. Now, the black is going to be cut all the way through. So in this case, I'm going to be using my Fusion Edge machine. I'll turn it on here in a minute. But the black is going to be a vector cut through eighth inch acrylic. So I'm gonna import those settings. Uh, I actually need to update this a little bit. It's going to be about 17% speed, 100% power, and 100% frequency. Now pay attention to those because you'll see that the speed is low, the power is high, and the frequency is high. When I do the vector scoring, which is going to be in red, it's also a vector operation. So what I do typically is I start by importing the same cutting vector operation that I did for the black. Here's where it's going to differ. Instead of power being 100%, I'm gonna make it more like 5%. The speed at 20% is still okay, but I'm gonna bump it up to 40 just to make it a little bit quicker. The frequency I'm going to leave at 100 and then the vector being inside out uh, doesn't really matter because I'm not cutting it. Uh, I'm going to actually do optimize which will make it the fastest it can. So you'll see when I do that inside out is 2 minutes and 52 seconds, optimize is 2 minutes and 49 seconds. It's not a ton of savings but if you're doing a lot of these it can add up. The other critical part of this is I need it to score before it cuts. So I need to make sure that my red scoring process is first. And that's how you set this up. It's the same exact vector operation. Your settings for speed and power are just going to be a little bit different in order to get that different result. I definitely encourage you to play around with this a little bit and see what it's like for your machine. But let's go ahead, I'll turn on the machine, we'll cut this and then I'll show you what it looks like in real life and why it's advantageous to some of your design elements. Now that the backer's been machined, let me show you what it actually looks like. 
So here is the white backer. At first look, you can't really tell what's going on and both sides kind of look the same. If you go in closely, you'll see all these little marks that is the vector scoring that I set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel some of these away so that you can see what it looks like. So right here, you can see that I can peel away that piece of masking. And I can do this everywhere that it was scored. So the intent of this is as I'm placing my pieces that get cut out of different materials, I can glue them into those spaces and be able to perfectly align everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off all of the masking so that you can see all of the vector score cuts. And then I'll probably place at least one piece so that you can see how I line everything up. I'm just gonna peel the masking off camera because it's kind of boring. I've peeled all the masking off and you can see in the reflection, it might be hard to tell on camera. You can kind of see when the light reflects off of it, there are little lines from the design. It is difficult to see on camera, but I can see them in person. So that's really what's needed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out a few pieces, stick them on so you can see how I line them up. But this is what vector scoring is. So hopefully that part is clear now. I know that a few people I've talked to in the past kind of struggled with that. Uh, but hopefully you know how to set it up now and you can use it in your future projects. What I've done is I've gone ahead and lined up the outer piece to the vector score that I had. Just making sure that it looks good all the way around. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and start placing pieces in. And that's how I use vector scoring in order to make a lot of my signage. There's a big benefit to this in the fact that I'm not wasting a bunch of other material in order to lay out templates or things like that. There are times I still use templates depending on what kind of design it is. But for something like this, the vector scoring method is a great way to get the design onto the uh, backer and make it a lot easier. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. If you have any questions about this, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer all of those. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.